Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I have here 1,000 feet of half-inch black plastic tubing in two 500-foot rolls. Now, I purchased this for my hydroponic system. It's to uh, deliver the water and drain the water out of the buckets, etc., etc., and I needed quite a lot of it for my two systems that I'm going to be setting up. But before I start cutting into this, I wanted to get some uh, playing with it done. Like, there's a few things that I want to experiment with. Like, if I blow into one end, have these connected together, how long before the blast of air makes it all the way through the tube and come out the other side? Now, theoretically, it should take about one second. Since this is a thousand feet and the speed of sound is about 1,100 feet per second, it should take just under a second to get through. But then the question is, does all the twisting and turning cause the speed of sound to not be a viable answer anymore? So, to find out, let's hook these together and just blow through them. Okay, so here we go. There's one end here, one end that's open over here. Let's see if anything makes it through at all. It does take a little while, but it does get there. It seems to be very weak though. It's uh, all the twists and turns must uh, cause the blast of air to spread out and weaken. But it does still make it through, and rather quickly. Uh, it felt like it felt like a couple of seconds, but let's uh, try to measure that a little bit more accurately and uh, provide a way for you guys to see it. Okay, so this is the first thing I've come up with. I've got a balloon over one end. Now I can blow in this end here. <laughs> so there is definitely a delay. So let's see if I can inflate it a little bit. All right. So now, when I release this, the air is going to start coming out and it's going to cause a chain reaction where the air all starts moving and then finally the air will come out of the balloon and we'll be able to see how long this takes fairly accurately. So release, close. <laughs> Took a little while. I'll probably uh, put this in my video file editor and count frames and see just how long this takes. So release, balloon gets smaller. A lot smaller in that case. <laughs> awesome! Okay, so here we are in the video editing software. It looks like I take my thumb off right there, so that's 11 or 12. See the frame number right here. So this is seconds, this is frames. There should be 30 frames per second. So now we just run through the frames here until the balloon starts to shrink. Okay, looks like right about there is where the balloon starts to shrink. Right, let's see, it's wobbling around a little bit so it's kind of hard. Right there, okay. That's 12 again. So that's one second almost exactly. Oh, that's great. So that's, you know, I'm giving plus or minus maybe two or three frames here. So this does correspond with what I'd expect if it was the speed of sound. Awesome! <laughs> I think I can do a little bit better though. Let's, uh, let's actually hook a vacuum up to this tube. Let's turn off the vacuum pump. I have started drawing, so feel free to okay, so do whatever you need. Two, one. Took a little while, didn't it? <laughs> so I've decided that what was happening is that I had it under such high vacuum, you know, a couple of microns, the uh, blast of gases that first hit the feather, though they might have been moving supersonic, but it just wasn't enough to start the feather moving until enough of the air got to it to start it moving. So it took nearly twice as long than what I was expecting. So what I've done this time is I didn't vacuum it out quite as much. It's like only about half the air removed this time. Canyon's actually going to film this with a high-speed camera. In okay. three, two, one. There, that moved much faster. All right. 
<laughs> it's cool how it didn't stop until later too. So here's the high speed footage which was originally filmed at 240 frames per second and is now being played back at 30 which means this is 1 8th normal speed. So the valve opens at about 13.10. You can see the that's where the sound begins at least. So now if we play this along until the feather just starts to move, you see it's a quite a little while here. Right, right there, you see it? Right about uh, 21 seconds, the feather begins to move. So that's 8 seconds uh, minus 10 frames, so that's 7 and 2 thirds of a second, which, uh, you know, divide that by 8, that's about 0.95 seconds between opening the valve and the feather moving. Dividing that by 1,000 feet between here and here, that gives us a speed of sound, or at least a speed that the air was able to push the feather at about 1,050 feet per second, which is almost exactly what I'd expect the speed of sound to be. <laughs> I think that's really cool. All right, so I've removed as much of the air as I possibly could. Now I'm going to replace the atmosphere inside the chamber with helium. Helium, of course, is much lighter than air. The molecules travel much faster, therefore the speed of sound is much higher. So now I'm going to repressurize this to some extent with this noble gas. Oh yeah, I forgot. This is a balloon thing, so it's got to be depressed. Can you switch over to here? Alright, here it goes. There it is, we've put in quite a bit of helium there. Alright, so we're pressurized with helium. You know, it's still under vacuum, but it's most of the atmosphere in there is now replaced with helium. Can we uh, get that high speed camera going? I don't know how we're going to do this. We're going to just blast it with helium. So we switch over to a balloon. Alright, so now we've got the helium in a balloon, and we're just going to blast the chamber with helium and see how fast the feather moves this time. In three, two, one. <laughs> Seemed to move fairly quick, although it didn't move much. So now I have the high speed footage with the helium. So it looks like the balloon, the helium starts to move right about here. So uh, 2107 looks like the first motion of the helium and that's about where the sound starts. And then we scroll along here and you can see that the feather starts moving before the sound even stops, before all the helium's out of the balloon. Looks like the feather starts moving right about here, so that's 24, 22. So that's 24 minus 21, makes me 3 seconds. 22 minus 7, and 15 frames, so that's half a second, so that's 3.5 seconds. Divide that by 8, gives me 0.43 real time seconds. Uh, 1,000 feet divided by that gives me 2,285 feet per second. Divide that by the 10.05 gives me 2.18 times as fast as the air. So quite a bit faster, uh, not quite as fast as I would expect. Uh, the helium probably was contaminated with a little bit of oxygen. There you go, helium's much faster than air. So there you have it. Despite the fact that the tube is all twisted into coils, the pressure signal moves through it at the speed of sound 
for the gas that is contained within it. For air, this is about a thousand feet per second, so it took one second for the signal to go through. Theoretically, pure helium would get nearly three times the speed, but this was a fairly crude setup and I was mostly just playing around. But it does show that if you have a 600 mile long vacuum chamber, such as the Hyperloop, and you get a breach at one end, you actually have quite a long time before the entire chamber becomes repressurized. In fact, you might have enough time to close some bulkhead doors and stop the breach. It also shows that the fastest speed that you can push something down a tube, or a gun barrel, is the speed of sound, or the average velocity, of the gas molecules which are doing the pushing. So if you see someone claiming to get two times the speed of sound using a compressed air cannon, they're probably using a lighter gas such as helium. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.